Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Brickeen. Our co-host again is uh, Jace Lejeune, who's in and our editor. And we're kind of going to try to do this on Mondays just because there's so much to recap. And I don't think y'all just want to hear me talking, you know. I don't want to hear me talking, Jace. But <laughs> Uh, even though I keep up with this, it's good to have a second voice, and I appreciate you coming in. We'll, we're going to be talking about LSU, and I'm going to be honest about my opinion, and I think Jace will be also. Um, I guess I was at the game, and we'll talk about the state colleges. Kind of slow on that, not as big as the week before. Tulane scored 69 points. That's what sticks out to me. And their offense is on fire, 35 points against Oklahoma week one. And Ole Miss, watch yeah, out. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'll, uh, we'll talk about how Southeastern almost won their game against Louisiana Tech. And Nickel State almost beat ULL. So, I mean, that's a lot. That's our hot topics with LSU McNeese. And then we'll talk about the pros. Joe Burrow, I did watch the Cincinnati game like a lot of LSU fans against – a pretty good Minnesota team. They're they're a pretty good team. They're very experienced. Had the young team beat the older team at home with a rookie kicker who missed the ex- he missed the field goal against LSU in the swamp. Remember? Yeah, he did. Uh, because people only remember uh, LSU's kicker winning the game, but they don't remember that they had a shot to win it at the end with a yeah. fifty-five yarder, I believe, or fifty-two. Yeah, because Trask got them down the field, and then it was pretty close. Yeah. It was a long field goal too, and it was meant to be because this guy didn't miss. I mean, he doesn't miss, and so we'll talk about Who's that. Your usual weird LSU for the game, yeah. as always. Just meant to be for LSU last year. Hopefully, a lot of stuff's meant to be in a good way coming up because it's it's real sloppy right now, but. Let's go ahead and start talking about LSU. And I'm going to go ahead and give my opinion, and this is going to be our topic this segment, and Jace will give his. Yeah, I've been watching LSU football, hmm, Jay, since the 70s. And pretty, pretty stern about, you know, my family's been, you know, my dad was a big LSU fan, my uncle's. You know, it, it, you know, then I've studied the LSU program prior to that, and I've met a lot of good people, a lot of great people that played at LSU or fans of LSU. This is a very unique time right now. I've, I've seen some bad teams, but I've always seen a good running game. You know, it's really hard to remember an LSU team that did not have a good running game. I mean, when you had – Definitely since I've been alive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's go back, and we're not going too far, but when you go back to Billy Cannon, the late Billy Cannon, they had Johnny Robinson, who's in the Hall of Fame, NFL mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. They had Billy Cannon, the first pick of the draft. They had right. Jimmy Taylor. Right, Jerry Stovall. Jerry Stovalls. Yeah. I mean, it just one by one. And then you get into the – the 70s, and you had Brad Davis, and you you had all kind and of Charles great. Alexander. Charles Alexander. Terry Robisky. Yep. And then you get into the 80s, and you've got some good backs. Yeah, Hilliard. Harvey Williams and Sammy Martin and mm-hmm. Dalton, Dalton Hilliard, Hilliard, Gary James. Garland. I mean, you had so many good. Gene Lang, who played in the NFL a long time, they were all in that same group. And then you get to Curling Hallman days that are not really great. <laughs> and you've got Kevin Falk. Yep. you got Rondell Mealy. Mm-hmm. And you go through Saban's era, and you've got one after another. Joseph Adai, Jacob Hester, you know, and, and you got Ollie Broussard. You've got LeBron, Den, LeBron, and Tofield. Yep. I mean, you. It's just they're not led by older running backs that are really. And we can talk about all oh, the O lines not good right now, and, and they're not. They're not. But there's a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, it's formation. It's coaching. Yep. It's your philosophy. It's the offense you're running. It's a yeah, lack. Yeah, gotta of be a little bit more creative in the run plays. They don't have a tight end to block, so they're lacking the the front to block to be successful. They don't have the big tight end. Cole Taylor, bless his heart, he's not a blocking tight end. He's not even a skilled tight end. He's just a big guy trying to develop into something right now. Because coming out, he was more of a a pass catcher. Yeah, and he's he needs to work on his feet. He doesn't break away, you know, when he catches. But he, I love the guy. He's a big guy. He's 
He's a, he's going to be a good player. But he they're having to rush him in there, Jace, because Eric Gilbert took off. And then you also had the retirement of uh, Stortz. Nick yeah, Stortz had the – I was high on in our preview magazine. The the kid from Brooklyn, New York, played baseball at LSU, 6'5", 260. Uh, you know, it, so you have a lot of problems there. And it's not just saying, oh, the five linemen are not, you know, blowing off the ball. It's more than that. And, you know, sometimes a running back just needs to make a play. Mm-hmm. You know, you just need to, like – if there's no hole, then Kevin Falk made a play. Yep. You know, I mean, Alvin Kamara makes plays. How no many line times have you seen Barry Sanders with no line just uh, make plays on his own? But we're getting into recruiting here. Mm-hmm. And our development. So if you're not developing the guys or coaching them, or it's recruiting one of the two. And I'm going to tell you, Ty is a good back, but he has not progressed. From Southern Lab, I, I, he was phenomenal in high school. His weight has went up and down, and he's better. I've always said he's good at two twenty, not two thirty five. Mm-hmm. Two thirty five, the hole closes. He doesn't have that burst, and he's not stamina. The guy to run twenty times a game, right? And an Emory, who's got four four speed at five eleven two ten, he he can't stay. He can't healthy. be on the field, and he's not eligible. Yeah, he can't get on the field. So. Trey Bradford is going to get Just, eligible, I yeah, guess. Right, but well, we don't know when. And we don't. And, and look, I liked what he did against Ole Miss mm-hmm. for a true freshman. Our fans are rough. I mean, they're like, "Oh, he's eh. no." He was a true freshman last year that didn't play the first seven games. And against Ole Miss, he in at Florida he caught a touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. But he's a big guy that actually has a lot of talent. So, you're going to have to lean on him. Hopefully, he comes through. And then Corey Kiner. The good thing is, what you're about to say, the two freshmen, Goodwin had the outside run before yeah. he had the ankle little nick up there. And I, then I, Corey Kiner. Corey Kiner was really impressive They didn't give football. him enough carries in the game. I don't understand it. You know, he needs more carries, not like two or three at the end. Well, he needs to be the first running back coming out on the field yeah. against Central Michigan next week. But this LSU team cannot function. Without a run game. And, you know, I don't think people should blame Max Johnson, who's trying to develop as a young starter, when he has no run game. That's that's like trying to run a car with three wheels. You need four tires. And we've seen it. I mean, this is – Max Johnson's only in his fourth start. We saw we saw Sam Howell, who's been in yeah. college for a long time and projected first-round pick. What did he look like against uh, Virginia Tech with really – no help yeah. around them. But but you somebody an average quarterback. But my point is somebody's got to make some plays. And if you watch college football, and let's just talk about the past two weekends. You watch Michigan State, all right? And that's a program that's not dominant on no line. They don't have a great O line. They got a back that's five eight, two hundred pounds that makes things happen. Like, the guy ran for 200 yards yeah. on Northwestern, Fitzgerald's team. Mm-hmm. Now, Jace, the great example is this little guy didn't have huge holes to run through. He's a great back. He's like a Kevin Falk. Stocky, short, can sometimes, cut and turn. Sometimes you need those 5'8", five, 5'9", five, running backs. You can't – Lyman yeah. can't see him hitting the hole with more than a 6'3", you know, got Greek god, you know, at but this 230 is a, this pounds. But this is either a development problem or a recruiting problem. And I think it's a combination of both. I mean, you should be able to run the ball at LSU. Especially against McNeese. There's a reason yeah. why they're at McNeese, and there's a, no offense to McNeese, no. but, and you're at LSU. Yeah, and if you can't run, and they couldn't run on McNeese the first half. or base, Most of the game outside of two or three little runs, Amani Goodwin had one long run. Yep. And then he got, like, nicked up, like, and, right after that run. And Kiner had a run when, when McNeese was gassed late in the game. Kiner, and scored. Whew. And I think Kiner should have got the ball more. Yeah. So, he, should be, he should be your number one running back next it's week. It's time to change things up because they keep going with Ty out there. And I, I thought they should have went with Kiner and, and Omani to start mm-hmm. the game. Yep. Let these guys run the ball. Yep. If the veterans – don't prove it, and and Coach O has said over the course of the whole season that we need our veteran running backs to step up. 
So might as well get the young guys a shot. If your veteran's not stepping up, get the young guys a shot. The other thing I'm seeing is they won't pick their receivers yet. It's time to pick the receivers because you're not going to have any um, flow with the quarterback. You've got to have your guys in flow with a young quarterback. There's you know too many receivers are trying to please. You know who's actually, to me, been the most consistent Receiving target besides Butte has been Jack Bell. Yeah, Jack, Jack. He's been the most consistent receiving threat besides Butte right it's now. It's time to start him at the beginning of the game and play him a whole half. You got one game left to get this right. Mm -hmm. I thought Brian Thomas would step up, but he had a couple drops late uh, from Nussmeyer who came in well, late in the game. Deion Smith looked good first game. Yeah. From Mississippi, red shirt freshman. Um, but you got to pick – you can't you can't have eight. You, this is not nineteen. Mm -hmm. You can't rotate ten guys in and say, okay, I'm gonna give you your catches this game. I'm gonna give you your catches. It's time to like separate. And I'm gonna tell you, J. Ray Jenkins. He needs to go on the bench for a little bit. He he dropped he had three drops. Drop, yeah, three drops Saturday. Yeah, and he had two against UCLA. Five drops in two games. Mm -hmm. And I like him. Mm -hmm. But it's time to give these younger guys a chance. Like Brian Thomas got two looks, but he dropped two balls. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, he had two drops from Nussmeyer from Nussmeyer, in the game. which one would have been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, but move some of these receivers to DB where you're not tough. You know, I, I don't get that. You know, these coaches, I don't understand. You know, if you're lacking safety toughness, if you're lacking corners that are not – you don't have anybody really behind Ricks right now in Stingley, move these guys to DB that will hit you. Like, like you can't stay with ten receivers. And you had, I believe, one receiver quit over the weekend for May meet. Yeah, right. Um I think he's gone. I, I don't Devon, know. Devontae uh, yeah. Lee? Yeah. I think there's talk he might be gone. Okay. Because I, I did see him out on Saturday. I, see, I did see him playing out there on Saturday. But, but the thing is, is another thing I'm really hating in this college game, Jace, or even high school, finish the season. If you're going to leave, leave after the season, not in two games into the season. I mean, no. why, where are you going to go and learn an offense – and to me, right if, if you are the NFL and you're making your checklist, it's like, okay, like, you're not invested. If, you, if you've shown you quit two games into the season, that, that should be yeah. – you know, that should you not help your draft grade at all. But you can't, you can't play anywhere this year. By the time you transfer, you're going to sit out five, six games. Your game, the season's over. You can't even learn an offense somewhere else. It, just, just finish the semester. Finish mm -hmm. your college – you know, it's okay to leave, but not, not during, during the season. season. Man. Right. Um, let's take a break. When we come back, Jace, we'll finish our thoughts with LSU, and then we'll start talking about state colleges. Yeah. We'll start talking about ULL, Nickel State, Tulane, Southeastern, and we'll go around the state. Northwestern lost a tough game. Uh, wasn't close, but they weren't supposed to win that one. Mm -hmm. But we'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. Our co-host today is Jace Lejeune. We're going to finish our talk about LSU. You know, I said 8-4, Jace. My After the UCLA uh, <laughs> right. crushing loss, my preseason prediction was ten and two. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this team was was a dominant team. I think ten and two was the was the highest. They yeah, I win. thought I thought we'd lose to Alabama and I thought we'd lose to Ole Miss, and those would be our two losses heading into the season. I had Florida. You had Florida, and, okay, and uh, Alabama, okay. So now we're looking at we got one game with a no-name Michigan team coming. This ain't the Michigan Wolverines. Central Michigan. Yeah, this is not Michigan State. Central Michigan's got a good team, though. And, and guess who their coach is? Jim McElwain, <laughs> right. who's proven in the past that he could beat LSU. Yeah, he's a good offensive mind. 
So you got an offensive mind who's going to attack your weaknesses on defense. We, you know, McNeese couldn't. McNeese didn't have the talent to attack mm-hmm. LSU. But were there any positives uh, that you took that you came out from the LSU win? Defense. The defensive. I thought the defensive line was the main takeaway, based uh, off how they play. They looked like the defensive line we've been you, hyping up about. You still can't really judge McNeese talent and their run yeah. game. Like you really don't know if LSU can stop the run still. Yeah, because uh, McNeese is not a challenge team. To LSU for the run. Yeah, we know the LSU defense line can rush the passer. That's, that's not it. that's it. But we don't know what they because there were some gaping holes and there were some big runs McNeese did have. So I saw Mike Jones get in the game a lot. Number nineteen. Yeah, he did. He, he did was, get in a lot. He was lost. He was he was a, a newbie. Still mm-hmm. looked like he was trying to figure it out. He's got the physical physique to be a great player. I did see. The little kid from Mobile have a great game, number 59. Oh, Desmond Little. Yeah, he's Desmond Little stepped up and made some plays. And I want to say, Desmond, man, give me a high five because you are the ultimate college football player. This is your third or fourth year. You haven't complained. You finally get in a game, and you look great. Like, if you look at Desmond Little, he's like, I mean, there's nothing special, but if you just look at him. Well, he's 6'5", 231. Yeah. He's not I mean, heavy. he's not, like, heavy. Yeah. He's really just – Skinny and long, but uh, yeah. I tell you, he when he fires he's off the quick. football, he is quick. And when they signed him, he was two ten, and he ran a four four five. He was the track leg on the relay team. Jace, he was a super athlete, kind of like that East Feliciana guy that you saw the other night. But yeah, this guy, he's still not two fifty like he needs to be, and he will be. But he looks phenomenal. He, they found something, but that is the great thing about college football. I'm glad that that guy didn't get in a portal after one year. You know, he stuck it out. And you look at Cameron Lewis. He stuck it out. Cameron Lewis had a pretty good he game on Saturday. He had his best game. Yeah. From Wasman High mm-hmm. School in Monroe. And who knows, with, with the safety concerns? Well, I think I mean? Derek Davis is getting better. I saw him play some reps from Pennsylvania. He's a great safety. Just young. Sage Ryan didn't play. Yeah, we're still waiting on the, the status of that injury. Yeah, and, and obviously Jay Ward didn't play. Ollie Gay didn't play. There were up 22, 23 players that didn't play. And Coach O still won't talk about a lot of them why they're not playing. So that is a big worry to me because they could have used these guys for UCLA game. There was about 10 or 15 kids that didn't play mm-hmm. the first week. Yep. And you need all your guys. So, But I, I think Stingley, they don't throw his way. Obviously, McNeese didn't challenge him, which is smart. They didn't challenge Ricks. But McNeese doesn't have the, the the speed to really get behind these DBs. And, and, again, you don't know if the safety position's getting better or the run game stop. Run. Now, I, the, pass, I, the pass rush, yeah. I was, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to mention something I was wrong about. I watched Mason Smith at Terrebonne, and I thought he had a physique mm-hmm. from another planet. Great-looking kid. Great kid, by the way. Yeah. He has turned it on. He has. He has really turned it the on. The light bulb has come on. Mm-hmm. And he's shown why he, he was a five star. Yeah. Now he's one that they based on potential becoming one. Yep. And he became. And he's six five, six six, three hundred pounds, looks about two sixty, three sacks. And again, it's McNeese, yep. no offense, but three sacks is three I mean, sacks. You're suppo- I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. You're yeah. supposed to dominate McNeese offensive line, and they did. And, yeah, Ma- Mason could have had more than three sacks. He was in the backfield a yeah. whole lot during that uh, Andre game. Andre Anthony had a great game. Andre Anthony looked really good out there. And um, yeah. Jacoby and Guillory got the most time he's ever had. Yeah. From Jacob- Alexander. Yep. He's, mm-hmm. He looked good. Yep. You know, Joseph Evans was in some, some, some plays. He's getting better. Uh, Jaquelin Roy had the forced fumble and the fumble recovery. Yeah, he's getting better. Yep. The defense is a is a t- uh, I think eleven and one team. The defense. Mm-hmm. If the safeties get better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the offense, man, I just Jace, I'm just so worried about no run game. I'm just and yeah, I'm, one dimensional. And I don't like how they played it Saturday. I I, I start Kiner, and then I have a, a good one. And those are, to me, those are your two most impressive and, backs out there. And let Ty watch and say, I need to work harder. I need yeah. to, if I want to start, I got to beat them out. Right. I, I need to, like, watch on the sideline for a little bit. And if you look back uh, at Alabama, because they had their, their All-American tied in. Uh, sat him. And they sat him. And the, you saw what the backup tied in did. He scored yeah. two touchdowns against Miami. 
So yeah. sometimes you just need to see it from a different angle, a different perspective, and motivate your, your game a little bit more. So maybe Ty does need that. They got two tight ends. LSU has none. <laughs> that's, yeah, and the that's guy that, that had a great game, Cameron Lato, mm-hmm. he's 6'5", 250, runs a 4'6". So it's not like he's not very good, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, Alabama's yeah. third team could be uh, better than a lot, of, a lot of colleges out I, there's I, I first do, team. I do think the tight end, big body blocker missing is hurting this O-line. Mm-hmm. I really do. I think that and the run game, not having the guy, not having your Clyde Edwards, not having your yeah, Kevin I thought, Falk. I thought losing Storch, too, was, was a bigger loss than we than yeah. we thought, you know, coming into the season. I think Nick was going to have a great year, and, and he was a guy that might have caught 20 balls and had a bunch of great blocks. and But they, you know, I guess we'll see if Trey Bradford gets wavered by the NCAA for this game. Because he's practiced all year. It's not like he's out of shape. I felt we'll get a good look at how our defense, what adjustments our defense made against Central Michigan. I feel like that will – It's going to be tougher. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit tougher. So, we'll see what jump they make from McNeese to Central Michigan because that's, that's going to be key in my I'm opinion. I'm going to tell you what. If they don't look better than they did against McNeese, they look better against UCLA offensively than McNeese. It was weird because we looked better offensively against UCLA, but we looked – De- better right, defensively right. against uh, McNeese. So, if they can put it together and get a little bit of a run game going, yeah. they don't need to have, you know, rush for 230 yards a game. They just need to keep the defense honest. If they bit. can't run on Central Michigan, I might have to go to 6-6. Six and six. I mean, and I'm not being negative. I'm just being honest. This is – You, you, you saw the gauntlet of the schedule they're about to look, play? If you can't run, Mississippi State might give you 10 yards if you can't run, and that's coming up next. I mean, in Starksville – Mississippi State just beat North Carolina State. And they're sneaky, they're sneaky pick in the ACC this year, North yeah, Carolina State. I mean, State. they beat North Carolina State by what, 14? I think it was more points? than that. 17 I think it was points? 21. 24 to yeah, 10. 20, okay, yeah, yeah, 17, yep. I mean, yeah, 14, yep. I mean, Tech was a better team than, than McNeese. When Tech was beating State, I think State wasn't really there mentally. Mm hmm. No offense to Tech, but I don't think State really put up the – obviously it their It seems effort. like this year that all the SEC teams have made a jump, have improved, and uh, showed they made a ma- major jump. And Scary LSU for LSU. It. it really is. I mean, look, the best player on LSU team, it's not Stingley. It's Kate nope. York. Yeah. Your kicker. To me, if there's two All-Americans this year, it's going to be Cade York and it's going to be Kayshawn Butte. I mean, those are yeah. your, they're, your two they're guys. They're showing out. Yep. Cade York is going to be a starter in the NFL for a long time. I mean, he can do everything. And you saw what the Florida rookie did. We'll talk about that later in the show with, with the Bengals. Um, let's take another break. When we come back, we'll start talking about Louisiana colleges. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, Go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. Uh, You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Libra King. Jace Lejeune is our co-host today. This segment, we're going to talk about the other colleges in Louisiana. Um, I did not get a chance to see Southeastern, Jace. Uh, I, I didn't saw get a chance either, but I, I was keeping tech, track of the scores. I saw the Tech score. Yep. And it was incredible. What was this? Tell everybody it was like 45 to – Yeah, it was 45-42. Ended up being the final score. And I mean, Cole Kelly had a great yeah, game. Yeah, Cole Kelly had five touchdowns, three through the air, two through, two on the ground, and it was back and forth. And I, t- I tell you what, like – if I'm LSU, good thing I didn't schedule Southeastern on the mm-hmm. on the schedule. That or, tech. Tough. Or, yeah, tech. or Tech. I would be scared to play either one of those two teams. And then Nickel State came close to beating ULL. Yeah. It was only, a, I believe, only a field goal game between uh, yeah. Yeah, ULL and, and Nichols. Maybe it was a little bit of a letdown for ULL after the, the big, I mean, yeah. the loss against Texas and being a little bit deflated. But Nichols, they have the athletes and they've shown over the years they can. They almost one year they almost beat Georgia. They almost upset Georgia a couple years if back. If Nichols shows up every week, their skill talent is way better than everybody else's in one double A, and that's what happened. They showed up against ULL, and they've got the the speed. 
Um, all I got to say is that Riverbell Classic between Nichols and Southeastern is going to be <laughs> it's going to be, be a fun one to watch. 60 to 60. Yeah. Over. Mm-hmm. If you like offense, that's definitely the game for you. Tulane put up 69 points, Jace, over the weekend. Ooh. I really love the the coaching that Willie Fritz is doing. I I'm gonna tell you what, if 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 Willie was like at the start of his like middle of his career, like forty ish. He would be top three, top four like right now he'd be a top three name. And I yeah. think he's still a top six, top seven yeah. name right now. I think Tulane will be losing him after this year. I I I think he's proven I don't know, these ADs don't sometimes make good decisions, but if I'm an athletic director and I'm the coach at, like, um, let's say Campbell left Iowa State mm-hmm. and Iowa State was open, you go get Willie Fritz. Yeah. If yeah. I'm if I'm the coach at Kent State or one of those schools that can pay a little bit more, right? I'm going – and there's no question, I'm going to get Willie. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. He, and he, he can run the program. He knows how to run a program. He's done everywhere he's been, I think, ever since Sam Houston State, even at the FCS level, Sam Houston State, and then you know, most recently at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. He's, he's shown wherever he's been, he's been able to rebuild a program. I just, I just think he could be on that level, even if a job like Brigham Young came open, you know, one day or something like that, or, you know, Utah, like Willingham, if he left. I mean, yeah. Willie, Willie would be a great candidate for an Arizona job, like, yep. the, you know, mm-hmm. those type of jobs. Right. Right, Power uh, Five, and I, <laughs> Lee, I'm excited to watch this week. Ole Miss plays uh, Tulane. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna tell you what. Uh, there's all this hype, right? And I know Matt Corral is good, and I know that Ole Miss is very skilled. They they got great receivers, but you know their coach is a slinger. He likes to. He's a great offensive coordinator, so they're gonna have great receivers. I don't think they run the ball enough. And here's something I want to throw out. I don't think Kiffin works on his run game enough. And when they play big teams, they can't run the ball. Mm-hmm. And he gets shut down. And everybody gets caught up into the hype. Now, Louisville's not a very good team they beat. And they, everybody's all, like, the media's like, oh, Ole Miss is the greatest. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't see that. I see Ole Miss as a team that plays hard. They played a nobody in Louisville. Louisville's not – this is not Louisville with Teddy Bridgewater Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson and all those guys. But – I really believe that Ole Miss is going to get a game this week for Tulane. Oh, I I knew that regardless. Look, look, Tulane almost beat Oklahoma and Norman. And Oklahoma would beat Ole Miss because Ole Miss would give up still 50 points to Oklahoma. I still believe that. Now, defense has improved. I believe it it has, but I'm not sure if it's the gigantic leap. Yeah. I I still think they've they've improved. Maybe they don't don't need to be – they just need to be average. With, with their offense. Well, Kiffin better coach because Willie Fritz can coach. And that quarterback they have at Tulane is a big-time player. Their running backs, Michael Carroll. Pratt's good. Yep. Their O-line is really underrated. Their O-line's better than LSU's. Yep. And their defense is scrappy. Tulane's got a scrappy defense, and they got speed in the backfield. And I could see a game that could be like 45 Ole Miss to 30, like 35 38, yeah, Tulane. 38, yeah. And if you screw up a few times, Tulane beats you. Like if you have maybe – if Corral's off, which like he was against LSU, he was off. We've seen the good Corral and we've seen the yeah. bad Corral. But Corral's not good against good teams. And he's doing good now, against – Now he, he had the good game against Alabama. Yeah. But he did – the Arkansas game, he threw like five picks. And the LSU game, he threw like five picks. So we've seen yeah. the good – we've seen the good and we've seen the bad. But I think Kiffin doesn't r- work on the run game enough. So when you play these big teams like Alabama and LSU, even LSU with this defense they have, if you can't run the ball, you can't just throw the ball down the field every play and expect to get touchdowns. It's a video game when you don't play anybody. Now, if they can't work on the running game, they can be they can be dangerous because they do have some really good backs. They do. They do. They just don't run them enough. Kiffin just – he's so into his offense – I see these coordinators sometimes. They're just so into it, they forget to run the ball. And it, they're not good running it when they need to be running it later in the season. I just you got to work on it. Like LSU, they need to work on their run game because you got the receivers already. Just work on that run game. And then uh, Grambling, I believe, they won. Uh, Grambling played Southern Miss, and they lost. They lost, yeah. Yep. That but was Southern, weird... Southern won. Southern beat uh, Miles College, but that was the game they were supposed to win. 
boy, one twenty. Northwestern State lost. Yeah, that was a big takeaway. They lost to uh, Alcorn uh, State. Yeah, that's not good for the job resume for for Brad Laird. And and I've heard that was not a game they could lose. Yeah, and I've heard that could be that could be that yeah could be, be it. tough. Yeah, um, that was not a good loss for them. That was probably the most upsetting loss of the weekend for Louisiana College. Like, mm-hmm. if you were looking at the schedule and going, okay, this is a definite win this week. That Northwestern's win. That's the one game they're going to win this year, and they lose it. It's not good. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And you got a tough Southland Conference schedule coming up for Northwestern State. It's not going to get any easier. No. No, it's – and then all your Texas powerhouses left like Sam Houston, and it's still hard. Yeah, it's still very tough to win. Oh, any final all, all these Louisiana – South and Conference teams are making improvements. Even Venice and Frank Wilson, they've making a lot of improvements. Now, ULM, we didn't mention ULM. Uh, they were off. They were off. They're playing. We were talking about Jackson State, but that was that's going to be next week. So thank that's going to be next thank week. Thank God ULM is off because <laughs> I think they would love seven open dates this year. They just don't have a lot of talent. Yeah, but that's expected in year yeah. one. And it, and like you said last week, it's, it's a lane nap year for Coach Ballard. Oh, if, if they win three games – and and can win one at the end, just momentum. You know, everybody's on the train with Terry getting the talent there, and the city of Monroe is fired up that he's there with Coach Rodriguez. Yeah, you got the former head coach of Michigan and Arizona there, right? In West Virginia, if you go back 15, 20 years ago, this one, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like really, and good. they're gonna pull out a win probably late in the year that they're not supposed to win. Yeah, and talking to Coach Bowen during the off season, he said if we can get a win this year, I mean that's gonna be a lot of momentum heading to next year. And then Georgia beat UAB, speaking of uh, – I was impressed with that win because UAB's good. UAB's got a good team. And how about this? Destin Bennett was booed like when they were announcing the, star, the stars who would be starring. Good. He was booed before the game. He was like, okay, I'll show you. He goes and throws five touchdown passes. It's not just LSU fans, huh? Yep. I mean, he only started, what, 10 games for Georgia last year? It, it was not his fault. It was, with the with quarterback situation, he was a walk-on thrown right. into a right. bad position. And he did pretty, he did pretty decent. Well, they, they can't get over the loss to Alabama and Tuscaloosa last year. We, he struggled. He just couldn't do it. I mean, they were just – the guy's, what, 5'10", about 175. Mm-hmm. Play, played really hard. You know, he gave it all his all. And he had himself a good game. I'll tell you what, they got good quarterbacks. That Beck kid's good, the one that backs him up. Mm-hmm. And then Daniels will be back soon. Yeah, Daniels will be back. And he, he's going to be fine. Everybody's worried about the well, not throwing a touchdown against Clemson. I so the game to talk that. about is A and M and Colorado. Colorado had them beat. You and called it. I mean, yeah. you called it um, last week. I'm not a big. I don't. I don't get like. I think people get under these spells, like they start reading stuff, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, they're everybody's saying it." So I'm gonna join up. I'm gonna join up and say it too. But no, I'm not one of those people. But A and M, they're not elite right now. They're just not. And then. I didn't want this to happen, but the kid from Longview, Texas, yeah, gets hurt, the quarterback, and they didn't. I don't know. I guess Haynes today, King. Haynes King. I don't know. It didn't look good. It didn't look good. And and then, and then the young quarterback that came in from he Georgia, he's he doesn't have the ability to run, where King could run, and he wasn't there yet. But the media jumped on. I guess everybody needs a media darling, a new team to like get behind. But I'm gonna tell you what. I don't think if if LSU played a game tomorrow with A&M, it would be a toss-up. Mm-hmm. I really believe that. I think they got as many problems at LSU. The only thing they have is Spiller can run. Yeah, Spiller, on o- that's really about it on offense. And then, now, I like them on – their defense is really They're good. good. Their They're defense good. is really Colorado good. Colorado was shredding them, though, in the first half. Mm-hmm. And if Colorado would have got that second touchdown in the first half when it stalled on the 20 of A&M, then they win because the game was ten to seven. Yeah, then. I think it's just second half came and they could not move the ball at all in the second half. And if I'm sometimes an, you just need yeah. a couple first downs and Colorado then get that, that to help their defense out a little if, bit. If I'm an A and M fan though, Jace, I'm like LSU was against UCLA. I'm like, it, it, it felt it felt like that. This is not a. I mean, this is not Colorado from. Bill McCartney days, okay? This is not and the – Cordell Stewart's not Rash- out there. Uh, Cord- Rashawn the Salam. Yeah, Rashawn you know, Salam's Heisman out Trophy there. Heisman Trophy runner. This is not Alfred Williams and Canadians McGee, All-American mm-hmm. DNs. This is this is a middle-of-the-road Colorado, right? This is and, – and they're playing you, like, straight up on defense. 
an offensive line. They're not – their O-line, but put this way, A&M's O-line, it's not much better than LSU's or if they're – I don't even know if they're better than LSU's. Their D-line – the D-line's is, really good. It's good, but they're not dominant. They were getting shredded by Colorado. And and then you look at the other teams in the SEC. Tennessee still looks awful. I mean, if I'm a volunteer fan, I'm, I don't know if I'm, like, wanting to go to a game again. It's been, like, 20 years. Somebody right. said, let's put – Nebraska, Tennessee, and Texas in the Bermuda Triangle because they ain't coming back. I think I saw the mascot <laughs> drinking in the stadium. I mean, it, it's really – and then their starting quarterback gets hurt. I mean, and he's not that – he wasn't that good, but then mm-hmm. their backup quarterback, they're both transfers. Yeah. And Pittsburgh's quarterback's really good, but Pittsburgh's average. I mean, they're a 7-5 team, and they go into Knoxville and – we're the only one talking about it like this because they're not. People aren't even talking about Tennessee as being elite anymore, and they're not. But it's sad to see that. I'm not a Tennessee fan, but it's just sad to see that. Yeah, when you look at teams across, like when the like Nebraska getting better, Florida State getting better, Tennessee. That's good for college football, and not seeing that it, it, oh, it hurts the sport. Speaking of Florida State, <laughs> oh, so they look good against Notre Dame on national TV. They lose the game. Now they lose to a one double A program on the last play of the game, and they're zero and two. Now you look at Notre Dame. Is really is Notre Dame really that good? No, because Toledo, they beat Toledo, beat Toledo by Toledo, three. who who A and M didn't A and M beat them what by three touchdowns? Yeah, what? Well, yeah, it was like thirty, what, 31 to 34 38 like to thirty four, thirty eight to ten, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Toledo yeah. was okay with A and M. A and M didn't blow them off the field, but Notre Dame and Toledo was neck and neck. That's scary. It took a Jack Cohen's finger to be, get popped out of place and popped back into place mm-hmm. and throw in a touchdown like 20 seconds left to beat him because it looks like Toledo had that game won late in the game. Well, Cohen's a good quarterback, and the running back Williams is phenomenal. He's electric. So they do have that. Um, Notre Dame's a young team. It's got a lot of talent. They're well coached. I think they will be okay, and they did win, so they're two and zero. Brigham Young is really surprising me this year without their quarterback. Yeah, and he's he, their new quarterback's pretty good too. I mean, and they beat they play. beat nationally ranked Utah, which is a rival of theirs, right? Yeah, big time. And it's been a while. I think it's been like nine years since BYU beat Utah. It's been a while. Let's talk about teams joining LSU on the couch that are not doing well. How about USC? That was – and Stanford was struggling. Lost, struggled against Kansas State. Kansas State beat the doors off them. And, and then – And then Stanford dominates USC. He's in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this was the prove-me year for uh, Clay Helton. And Don't they be look, honest with you, I'm surprised he's last this long. And, you know, USC has a top-five draft pick quarterback, and he has regressed. He hasn't progressed. He's regressed. And – that's coaching. Uh, USC has no run game. It seems like that the last couple of years with USC quarterbacks. I mean, when was the actual – because, you know, USC quarterbacks are always hyped in the preseason. But when yeah. was, like, the actual last quarterback that was hyped up that did well? Well, Colvis is is a hell of a quarterback. Yeah, he is. Well, let me tell you why UCLA is still going to lose three or four games. Oregon. Oregon beat That's going to be a loss. Oregon is way – Way better than I thought they would be. I mean, going to Ohio State, and guess what? Ohio State can join LSU and USC on the couch, too, because Ohio State, I've never seen them look so bad on defense. They look really bad on defense. They don't look like they can stop Tulane. I mean, I'm serious. They they look bad. I've never seen Ohio State look that bad, ever. And uh, their quarterback's young, Stroud, but he's not – there yet. A lot of people, a lot of Ohio State fans were, were blaming Stroud. Stroud played a he's good young, game. Stroud's not, the, Stroud's not the problem. The no. defense put them in a lot of bad situations. They couldn't stop the run. The defense looked really rough. And the final thing is, another team that can join LSU in relating to, like, not fulfilling their potential is the University of Texas Longhorns got the you-know-what knocked How out How about of Arkansas? Well, wow. Wow. Uh, Sarkeesian didn't coach well. I mean, let's face it. Arkansas doesn't have more talent than Texas, Jace. 
They don't, but what they do have is they believe. They, they, they play hard. Believe, they play hard, and they believe in Pittman and, and his program, what they're trying to do. They are 100% bought in, and sometimes that's going to be better than just raw talent out but there. But if I'm a Texas fan, I'm like, whoa, we got this Alabama protege again, right? This this guy that's a you know a genius. They could be forty to what forty to fourteen or something like that. It also helps when you give up three hundred thirty three rushing yards. Um, there's there's just so much. He's an offense guy. We know that, but there's just so much you can do when they're having the ball the entire game and they're rushing three hundred thirty three yards on you. But you know what? It's not just an LSU problem. Is my point right now? Defenses are getting shredded at big-time programs that sign all these big names, right? Ohio State's been top three recruiting for five years. Where's all these great recruits? What's going on? What's going on with their defense? What's going on with USC? I mean, they've got great players still. They just got the number one D tackle that LSU tried to get this past year. Mm -hmm. They're stacked at DB. It just comes to show you that, and I'm sure this – you probably will agree with me here, but the star system, is it showing its flaws right it is, now? It is. It's flawed. Mm-hmm. And, and you know I'm not a fan of it at all. I think you, I think coaches need to go back to going to games and evaluating the whole enchilada, everything, not just what they look like. So when I rank a guy, I don't rank stars. I rank high D1, low D1, 1 AA, D2, D3. You got to rank the heart, too. Mm-hmm. You got to get back to who really has toughness. And I think you need to – some of these schools need to go back and start signing guys that are tough and look the part. Or maybe not as tall as you want them, but tough, tough. Arkansas's whole team. Yeah, they're just – Tough. Really tough, yep. And probably 40-time, if they did a 40-time day, you wouldn't be impressed. Look at another example. Look at, look at Iowa. Iowa oh. doesn't have four or no, five stars no. out there. They have a bunch of three stars that are well disciplined. They play, they're tough, yeah. and they play hard, and that's all of them. Well, Dabo Sweeney started winning with overachievers, mm-hmm. outside of Watson. Right. He had a walk-on receiver that led the country in catches. Okay, who was five foot nine, who's in the NFL now with the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, and Alabama doesn't want to see his face ever again because no. he seems like he's always had a great game against Alabama. But TCU built their program up with walk-ons and guys that care. Mm-hmm. That's how they went from a one double A school. Yep. You can't forget what got you there, and you got to still, you know, the Jack Beshes of the world. He comes in, he's tough, man. When he throws the ball, he's like, Arr! yeah. You need that. Mm-hmm. You need that 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 aggression. That I'm here to give it, show it. I'm gonna bring it. We, you need that, and or, or you got to get the coach to get it out of kids. But a lot of times, you kids are born with some of that. They're born with leadership. They're born with that, yeah. that aggressiveness. There are so many kids that dream of playing at LSU or you know or Texas Oklahoma or whatever, or wherever, Florida, wherever. And you need those guys in the program because they're going to do whatever it takes just to so just for their program to win and play well. And you know, guys like Jack Bess or or guys that love their school and love their program, and they're going to want to do well. And LSU did not recruit him till the middle of his senior season. Yep. Because he was going to Vanderbilt. Because he wasn't ranked. Let's just be flat honest about it. Follow the rankings, right? Yeah. Don't follow rankings. Follow if the guy can play and if he has a lot of heart. You can actually get someone that cares with talent. Mm-hmm. But you got to see it. And you got to see it. You got to go watch. If you go watch Jack Best play as a junior, and I'm LSU, I'm offering him like game three of his junior year. Yeah, like sophomore junior year. That I mean, he. I mean, I was surprised he didn't get an offer by then. I soon. I mean, and it shows you got to go to games. You got to be there. I guess right now, Jace, before we get another break in to start talking about the pros. There's only one team that's got a slot in the playoffs, I think, right now. That's a Alabama. guarantee. And then maybe Oregon, maybe. But if you look at the Big Ten, uh, not really anybody dominant this year for yeah. the first time in a long time. I mean, I still like the Big Ten's chances uh, because Iowa, I was looking pretty good right now. They got a resume right now. They just have to win. They can't, they can't lose. And uh, they might have four one loss, but they really have to go the whole way. And we know Ohio State's talent. They've done this before. They've lost a game early in they the didn't year. They look this bad on defense, though. Yeah. 
they haven't. But Ohio State, they're going to have the talent just to beat everybody, everybody else on their schedule in the Big Ten. The game of the week for this week is Alabama-Florida. Now, the backup quarterback, Richardson. He's phenomenal. He is incredible. I think he only what had the ball seven, eight times and scored like four touchdowns and on those 300, eight. And 300 yards yeah, on like eight attempts. On eight attempts. He is a freak. He is what I call a more developed Dak Prescott and a bigger version of Dak when Dak was at State. Remember when we couldn't LSU couldn't stop Dak? Oh, I remember that. Well, I'm really getting worried for LSU on a lot of things. But I'm worried about LSU trying to stop this kid in Tiger Stadium. And that was one of the things I was telling people I knew. They were like, they don't have a quarterback. I'm like, no, the quarterback whisper guy is Mullen. If he's got a quarterback on his roster, trust me, he can play. And this guy has been his guy all along. He's, he's out of Gainesville, Florida, mm-hmm. from a little 1A school. He's 6'4", 240, runs a 4'4", He's a Cam Newton, like, 2021 version of Auburn. The dude was doing backflips in pregame. Yeah. He's, <laughs> He's the, unreal. Remember when Cam Newton ran all over LSU and everybody else? And they won a national – this is another Cam Newton type of guy. And if he's healthy, I heard he pulled up. Yeah, he did. And it was on the touchdown yeah, run he right. scored. If he's he pulled not, up. If he doesn't have a torn hamstring, oh, he's. I'm, I'm curious to see what he can do against Saban because Saban doesn't like this mm-hmm. matchup. He doesn't like this. No. Stopping a guy 6'4", 240, an open field that runs 4'4", and he's got a lean to him. He's not, like, running out of control. He's in control with his body. And Florida's always got skill, talent, and they got a good OD line. They got they, like LSU. They just got to have a quarterback and a run game, but they're deep at running back. I'm, I think, I'm not gonna say because I'm not doing really well on my victories <laughs> and losses against. It's Alabama. hard to pick against them, but it's I think hard. Flor- Florida's gonna give Alabama all they can handle. Yeah, uh, this week. I think it's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a tough task for uh, for Alabama. It, it is on the road too, right? Is that, is that Florida? Yeah, it's that Florida. Okay, and they have the talent to beat Florida. And here's the thing, too. Alabama's got Chris Allen out for the year. Yep. And now Anderson's hurt. Will Anderson. Yeah, Will Anderson got so hurt. So both yep. of their DNs are hurt. That's different. Yep. Will Anderson had 12 sacks last year, 20 hurries. He was a, He's a leader of their defense. Chris Allen was. He's going to be a first-round pick. Yep. yep. And Chris Allen had, like, 10 tackles behind the line. Th- those two out are not good. I know they can say, oh, another guy up. But those two guys – or the pass rush for Alabama, and that's going to hurt. They got to play two true freshmen now, and that's 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 still not the same for Alabama. That could be the weakness. You know, Mullen will exploit your weaknesses as a coordinator. Yeah, he will. He's a, he's a great coach, and he does he does do that. He does exploit. So no weaknesses. Will Anderson coming off the edge means Richardson off the edge running is going to be possibly really good for them. And it's also, but like you point about the hamstring, let's see how let's see what happens how, here. How healthy he is. For that game. Because if he does have a torn hamstring, Bama caught yeah. a break. Mm-hmm. Yep. Big time. And then uh, I really hope the kid from a and is going to be okay, the quarterback, Haynes King. But I still don't think he was polished. I don't think they're a top ten program. Uh, I didn't get on that bandwagon. Um, like, for Alabama's sake, I, I think Florida, Florida might be the team that catches them off guard this year. Florida's the team that I think could beat Georgia and go to Atlanta. That's my pick, uh, Florida and Alabama going to Atlanta. Like the only two teams on Bama's schedule that I could see, like you know, making things interesting with them were, you know, or Florida, and then for whatever reason, Ole Miss seems to have a crazy game with them too. But I just think I don't think Ole Miss going to be able to run on Alabama, and they're gonna they're gonna be able to shut that passing. You can't just pass your way yeah. to Alabama ninety percent of the time. It's mm-hmm. got to be some balance. But that's the thing I think they're going to adjust this year. I think they're going to be a little bit more balanced because I think Kevin's going to know about that. I think he realizes that they need to run the football, and they got the they got the per- they got the running backs to to do so. You know, I, it's going to be crazy. But if again to finish our college uh, segment, mm-hmm. if LSU has got to pick the running the two running backs to go with, and to me, it's Connor and Brad and uh. It's going to be Bradford, hopefully. Yeah, Bradford, Connor and Bradford, and maybe Goodwin. Goodwin. Yeah, those And then three. Ty's got to, like, get motivated to say, you know what, I need to maybe just get better shape. I need to hit the hole harder. I need to, like, focus in more because that's what you need. It's not 
is constructive criticism. Yeah. When if I, he's in shape, he can be your closer. What I'm doing today is constructive criticism. I I think he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. But you need to be motivated sometimes to hit your uh, potential. Right. And competition. And but you you can't be rewarded if you're not getting the job done at the same time. Um, and Trey Bradford, if he's given a waiver, I think he he's bigger than he was last year, and he looked good. Actually, when I was watching some Oklahoma practices, and he looked way bigger and way better. And I think they're and he's going to be your pass catching back. Yeah, he's he's he going to be your pass catching back. Yeah, he can hit the hole. He's fast. Mm -hmm. He was nervous last year. You could tell he was really nervous. But all that's out. He was a freshman. He was just he dropped some balls last year. People remember that. But he was just really nervous, and he didn't play the first seven games of LSU season last year. Right. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the NFL. Talk about Cincinnati Bengals, which I had a chance to watch the Vikings game. Talk about Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Daniil Hunter, Justin Jefferson. They were all in that one game, and talk about the Steelers, my team, a little bit, and the NFL. Had a chance to watch a little NFL games this week. I don't watch a lot all the time, but. Mm -hmm. I was just in the mood to watch a few games. We'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Jace Lejeune is our co-host. Our topic this segment is the NFL We'll start with the Cincinnati Bengals, Jace. They won a game. Uh, overtime. Overtime, yeah, against the Vikings, who I like the Vikings, but they have the worst luck in the world. Um, they just can't get to the Super Bowl, and in the past they lost four Super Bowls, right? Yeah, uh, Fran Tarkenton was playing back in the old, back yeah. in the old days. Old days with all the great players with Minnesota. They went 0-4 in the Super Bowls. Um, those fans, I feel for them. I hope they can win one. I do like their team. I think their running back from Florida State is phenomenal. Yep, on my fantasy football team. Yeah, he is. He's one of the best backs in the league, I think. And then Jefferson is phenomenal. I think yeah, Thielen's a really Thielen's good receiver. Yeah, they got a good tight end. Irv Smith's hurt, but they got other tight ends. I think they got a good defense, too. Daniil Hunter's back after missing all of last year. He got a sack. Yep. Eric Kendricks is a really good linebacker. Yeah, from UCLA. Yep. Uh, Patrick Peterson's with him now. Yeah. That's, that's weird Arizona. seeing Patrick Peterson out there. They didn't the call his name purple. much, which that's good. Yep. He, he didn't Not throwing his way. Yeah. And he's in his 30s. Um, I, I like uh, what happened. I like that Cincinnati got their first win for Joe. I'm pulling for Joe like a lot of LSU fans. Because we want him to work out. We want him to pan out. We don't want him to get hurt again. We want him to do well. And, you know, it, the more he's successful, the more it helps LSU, too. And I, I, I'm going to tell you something, Jace. The Joe Burrow train with me is continuing with what he can do in the NFL. I think he's exceptional. Oh, yeah. I think he is different. I think he is worthy of that first pick. If he doesn't get hurt last year, he's probably rookie of the year. Um, outside of the quarterback from San yeah, Diego. Yeah, Justin Herbert, yep. But he, I think he's – Joe is just – I think Joe could be the head coach at LSU one day. He's got that spurrier mentality to him. He cares about everything, attention He to does detail. have a little bit of that little uh, – He does. He, yeah. I think he would be – I wouldn't a, say cockiness, but a little, you know, com, you know, confidence. He's confident in himself. I think Joe Burrow would make a great coach one day. Yeah. And – Hopefully it would be LSU. Now I would be 80 years old by the time that would happen. But, uh, but hopefully he have a long career, right. too, which he could have if he, if he stays healthy. But here's my opinion. I think the O-line for Cincinnati is better. They've improved. I yep. think their defense is really good. And they got some new free agents. They draft it well. Tyler Shelvin's not on the one deep, just mm -hmm. so people know. He's on the team. Yep. But he didn't get a lot of reps in that game. But d linemen take a while to get playing time in the NFL. Right. I think he'll play as the season goes on. I like not only Jamar Chase, but I like the receiving core that he has now. Yeah, T. Higgins. T. Is, from Clemson yep. is doing really good. He's filled out. He's better. Uh, they got Tyler Boyd, the veteran yep. from Pittsburgh. Right. And when Joe Mixon's healthy. Oh, man, the Oklahoma guy from California. He's, he, he looks like he cares again. Not that he didn't, but he sometimes you get in a losing program mm -hmm. and you just don't have – he's hitting a hole in like – 
Hey, yeah, he was fun. looking at that for running back. He's yep. having fun, you know. And I was so worried that they would lose that game because <clears throat> you could tell the momentum was changing when the Cincinnati coach went for it on fourth and one on their own 30, which the guy's got some big kajunis that, to do that. I think that's – I'm st- the jury's still out on Zach Taylor. I'm not, I think. Uh, I'm not, that's my yeah. only concern. Yeah, the jury's still out on him. It's like I don't – sometimes he does some immature coaching calls, mm-hmm. and he got Minnesota back in the game. I mean, Minnesota was gone. Like, that game was over with. And if yep. they punt and not go for it on fourth and one on their own 30, they, they stop them and they three touchdown lead clock runs out, right? But instead they run down it's the pros – you got a veteran quarterback in Minnesota, and they they all of a sudden they tie the game, and then you're sweating yep. it out. I was going to end up in. I thought it was going to end up in the tie. To be honest with you, I thought it was going to be 24, yeah. 24. Yeah, time runs out. Time runs out. Yeah. But, but you know what? The schedule that Cincinnati has is brutal. When you got to play the Steelers and the Browns and that whole division, the Ravens. <laughs> that whole division I mean, is loaded. So you got to win these games. You got to win these non-conference games to be a ten and. Or eleven win team because there are four. There are four playoff teams in the AFC North. With a, yeah, the, we talk about the Ravens, the Browns, the Steelers. Those are all, and like the Bengals look really improved. But if I mean, the Ravens keep having injuries, they're not going to be a playoff team. They've had mm-hmm. their starting running back out for the year. They've got a couple other well, guys. Yeah, out running for the backs year. are all hurt yeah. right now. So I mean, we talk, that's their that's their uh, bread yeah. and butter. Right. And so um, there's an opening, I think, for a sleeper team to go to the pro playoffs to get there um cleveland disappointed me by not finishing again yeah they had a special teams yeah goof at punt. the yeah punt at the but end you gotta finish when you when you're beating uh kansas city by two touchdowns you gotta keep pouring it on you gotta you gotta like finish them. like y- there's i mean your foot cannot be off the gas pedal when you're playing patrick mahomes no. and the chiefs no. there's a two score game kelsey, turn into i mean travis kelsey's unguardable you cannot guard him. Tyree Kill, I mean. Yeah, he's a video <laughs> game guy. And then Claude Edwards outside catching mm-hmm. balls. And, and Mahomes you, doing what he does. Mahomes yeah. is just – but I, I I wish Patrick wouldn't run as much, Jace, because his career is not going to be as long. I yeah. really worry. He's been hurt a lot. And, you know, I, I don't – I'm just worried that he, he keeps getting hurt. He's not going to play a long time. I think when he gets older, he's, he's going to realize that. I think it's just those first couple of years you want to – Make plays yeah. on your own. When you get older and mature, you realize, okay, I need to pace myself yeah. a little bit more. So Pittsburgh shocked me by beating a good Buffalo team who could be a Super Bowl team. I was very impressed with the Steelers' defense. Man, their defense really impressed. Awesome. Um, I really think that Rossenberger keeps shocking me when every time I think he's done, he's, he does well. You know, mm-hmm. and he's got two great receivers. I mean uh, – Schuster Smith from USC. Yes, uh, Juju Smith Schuster and then uh, Chase Claypool. Man, they're huge. Those are two of the biggest receivers in the league. They're both like 6'3", 4", 220, 230. Once, and once Najee gets comfortable. Yeah, it's Najee's be, having a tough time yeah. getting it going, mm-hmm. but he had a good run in the game. He didn't dominate like Derrick Henry. It took Derrick Henry a year. Yeah, it did, it did take Derrick um, Henry a year or two to get going. So let's go to the Saints. Yeah, buddy. Oh, Who that? Yeah. Who that? Uh, by the way, um, I'm gonna stick to my record. Okay. <laughs> uh, what ten and seven, something like that. Yeah, I think they they can go. Well, okay, it's, t- it's seventeen games. Yeah, yeah. So eleven and six, twelve yeah, and five. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to that. But you know what? Here's what. Here's the deal. Hats off to Jameis Winston. Yes. I mean, he did flaw. He played a perfect game, and then the defense was great. And that rookie DB from Stanford's phenomenal. Oh, he's good. He's a he's freak. Good. I mean, the play he made, that read he made to get that interception, he made that play. It's a hard interception. And then the receivers, man, that kid that turned into a tight end from wide receiver, phenomenal. And they, they found something there. Oh, Jawan Johnson. They wow. They found Penn State guy. They they found something there. Yeah, they did. And they f- Sean Payton just seems he's a, to he's a, he's a <laughs> he find these guys. It's but here's the deal. The Saints last year, Jace, they made they beat Tampa Bay so bad it make you quit, right, the first time. Mm-hmm. So they had a game like this last year early on. They beat Tom Brady and them like what? Yep, 30 same points? score. Yeah. Same exact so score. So this is like a replay. But the Saints need to finish the year. They need to have a full year. And that's my point. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, I mean, they're a playoff team, but mm-hmm. 
they won a bunch of games last year to start off, and then they they started the only, dying off. Last the only year. thing I say, the potential of this team is higher because of Jameis Winston's arm strength can actually you know open the playbook yeah. a little bit more. But this is Jameis Winston we're talking about. I want to see if, if he's year. a consistent game in and game yeah. out. You know, we've seen him throw thirty touchdowns and thirty yeah. picks in this game. I don't want to take away from anything. It wasn't in Green Bay. It was in Florida. Um, Aaron Rodgers is not happy. The team doesn't yeah. look very good. Green Bay looks like they're not playing together. I'm not trying to take anything away from the Saints. Yeah. I'm just saying they're not, like, in sync. Right. Um, how will the Saints do against Brady twice? How will they do against Carolina? I'm curious what they do against do next week. I'm, I really yeah. am curious because – there are a lot of things going into it. The Saints were, point, were willing to win that game and play that game for New Orleans and for their yeah. city. They, oh, they, it's they, they, were, they were motivated to get that win for them. And, you know, Jameis Winston, his first game, replacing an all-time great like Drew Brees. He wanted to prove himself that, you know, all that was good. This Sean Payne got this team ready. But I'm curious what happens next week and the week after that. If, if they can consistently, you know, you know uh, have this. And we talked about offensive line with, with LSU. The Saints offensive line, yeah, I mean, it's probably as good as it gets in the NFL. They've drafted well. You know, they're not big on draft picks, but the draft within it with the O-linemen are phenomenal. They, their O-line is really, uh, really good. And But you know what, Jace? It doesn't hurt having Kamara. Mm-mm. All right, and doesn't hurt having these tight ends now. Yep, Taysom and, Hill. And yep. then Troutman is – they got good tight ends. Yep. But, you know – I saw a game where Jameis Winston played within himself. Within himself, yep. and the team was just so dominant. Like, when your defense is that good, it's so easy to win games as a quarterback. Even when Breeze was there, when they were great on defense, it's just so much easier. Now, the defense is not always going to dominate. This is the NFL, mm -hmm. right? Too. Right. And it's good to see Quan Alexander back with a new yeah. number. He looks good with number five. Number five. Oh, I got two. I and like he that. looked like he didn't lose his speed. He looks the old Quan Alexander. He had a lot of great plays, obviously. Um, Marcus like, Davenport looked really good yeah, out there. He's just got to stay healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, hey, look, I'm happy. Uh, I just It's a long year. Um, it's not the college football. You yeah. can't dominate one game and then go undefeated like – Right. Unless you're the Dolphins I mean, and the everybody, everybody in the NFL is is good when it comes down to it. Even the, the yeah. bad team. I mean, everybody has a chance to win any given Sunday. That's the yeah. old saying. I'm going to tell you, the Rams with Stafford. He, they, look, he, they look good. I'm, I'm happy for him being, you know, having all those lackluster teams in Detroit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for him, too. And it was just really I – don't, I don't blame him. I mean, it was just really the – the team around him, he, he was always a great quarterback. I always thought he was a great quarterback. But when you put him on a good team, whoo, what about, boy, watch What about out. Carolina getting their quarterback from the Jets? Sam Darnold looks do you, really good. Do you know what Sam – Sam wanted that one a little bit more because he got the chance to play his whole team. So, you yeah. know, he wanted to stick it to him. And, and you he know, played Terrace well. Marshall had a couple of catches, but they have a good receiving core. And they have good players already. Like, Terrace Marshall joined an offense that already had good players. You know, it's not like he had to come in and be the guy. Now, Jamar and guess who he gets to join? He gets to join uh, his old uh, play calling coach, yeah. yeah, coordinator Joe Brady. Uh, there's a lot to be. There's a lot of season left in the NFL. There's 17 games. Anything can happen. You know, the Steelers won like what 10 in a row, and then they lost like they, five yeah, of they the last fal seven. They faltered the end of, that, end of last season. And the season. Saints did the same, similar. Not as many wins in a row, but they didn't finish really well. Mm -hmm. I love Drew. I mean, Drew is like, top three quarterback yeah. of all time. But I feel like the last time, two or three years. Mother's, mother time, father time, everything yeah. was ready to it, – it was just ready for him to – Speaking of father time, though, it seems like Tom Brady's actually getting better <laughs> while he ages, while he gets older, which is insane. Like, he, he, he gets better. It's like a Benjamin Button case, it seems like. <laughs> right. Well, if Fournette plays like Fournette, they're going to be okay. Now, like, Leonard – has glimpses, and I still, I'm still waiting for Leonard to be more dominant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We know what Leonard can do, yeah. but he still like shows that flash sometimes. He's got that number seven now, which I think looks good. Tampa Bay's defense is really good. Gronk is still really good. Uh, if they can keep their receivers out of trouble, yeah, they're pretty good. 
even even after the Saints' dominant victory, I still think Tampa Bay is the, the team to yeah, beat I mean, in the division. And look, Atlanta, even though they they got beat bad, I mean, Atlanta still got Ryan and they still got, you know, Jones at linebacker. They got a great team. They just – Atlanta's a team you don't want to play twice a year. Carolina, you got to play Carolina twice now with Sam Darnold. Tom Brady, that's six games of your schedule. So those are going to be the t- some tough games. And then I'm still not a Dallas fan. You no, know, I think they're going to be. Pull, I'll pull for Dak Prescott because he's a true poor yeah, boy from right. Haunt, from Houghton. And he gave Houghton a shout out. You know, Sunday yeah, Night Football does yeah. the introductions. He said Houghton High School. I, I just don't know if the coaching staff is is what they need. The last two coaching staff. Yeah, McCarthy. Yeah, and and no. the coach before him. I, I just don't think they got the most out of the team. Dallas has a lot of talent. I'm going to tell you what, that rookie linebacker from Penn State. Micah Parsons. He's, go ahead and put him in the Hall of Fame if he doesn't get hurt for the mm-hmm. next 10 years. Yep. He's he a freak. A he's a freak. Yep. Um, San Francisco's doing well, the 49ers. Arden Key is playing there from LSU. Um, Oakland, we'll see what they have. Yep, Las Vegas now. Las Vegas, <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. Excuse Las Vegas me. Raiders Excuse me. now. It's hard to remember. Yeah, still. like Los An- there were Los Angeles, Oakland, Las Vegas. Yeah, who the, knows the, where that. The na- Colts are not very good. Wentz had a tough game. Yep. Carson Wentz, this might be the last chance he gets. I yeah. Think. And I Philadelphia, think so Jalen Hurts looked good. They Hurts had a good, good win. And oh, I mean, you had two Alabama quarterbacks going after it: Miami and uh, New yeah, England. Two, uh, uh, and Miami wins. Miami won. But Mac didn't have a bad opening game starting off. Well, the thing with Belichick, if you don't win and you're the quarterback, uh, you won't be there long, even if he's young. They, he doesn't care how old you are. Mm-hmm. So it's weird seeing New England, Jace, lose openers to someone that's not a Super Bowl champion. And I tell you who also looked really good was the Cardinals. Yeah. And Kyle Kyle Murray. Kyle Murray. Yep. They he got J.J. Wyatt. Yeah, J.J. Wyatt. Rashard Lawrence had a couple of tackles in that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. LSU, Neville, Neville yep. High School. Yep. Hopkins looked Hopkins good as is always. a freak, man. <laughs> he is a freak. His his ability to cut and turn is just off the charts. Larry Fitzgerald, I don't know if he's coming back. He hasn't officially retired, but he's kind of technically yeah. trying to make a decision still. Mm-hmm. He's on the something list right now, not the injured list, but I don't yeah, know. It's like status. In, inactive, yeah. I guess. Inactive. They don't list. need him. They really don't need him. I think he needs to go ahead and retire. Who's going to come out of that NFC West? Let's talk about another division. We're talking about the AFC North earlier. Oh, Seattle That's is uh, Seattle looks Seattle the Rams good. Rams Forty ers Cardinals brutal. <laughs> oh, that is a brutal division. Seattle, you know, Father Time's been really nice to Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. Well, he has to be like mid mid thirties yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, he looks the same he did ten years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ethan Posick's on that O-line from LSU. Damian Lewis from LSU. Oh, Jamal way, Adams. Al Woods is back with uh, okay. Seattle as a D-lineman from Elton, Louisiana. Yep. He's on that Seattle team. But you got to take your hat off to Pete Carroll. He rebuilds, reloads, rebuilds like a Belichick. Mm-hmm. It, Seattle's never really been horrible. No. I mean, they're they're good when they're not even in the semis to go into the Super Bowl. He's learned he's learned from his first stint in the NFL before USC. It was a little different time, but he you know he's he's grown up when he got yeah. back to Seattle. I would to- love totally different coach. look if something happened at LSU and they couldn't get some young coach, and Pete Carroll wants to leave the NFL. I know Pete's seventy something years old. He doesn't look well. He's he in good shape. I mean, he but takes would, care of himself. I'd hire him in a New York second if if there was an opening. And I needed a big time coach just to get things fixed, to get mm-hmm. it right. Right. He would be my guy. And you know what? He's got to be close to wanting to leave the NFL. He's, it's been what ten years now, maybe a little it's longer. Been, okay, USC, two thousand about two thousand eight or so. Two thousand nine was his last year. So there. eleven, twelve years in the NFL. Yeah. Ken Norton still is coordinator from the USC staff. He's still got a lot of the same guys with yeah, him in right. Seattle. But he's a guy like Saban that he can come to a college and just break it down and rebuild it quick. Mm-hmm. He knows how to run it. Yep. Um, and look, don't be shocked if he comes back to college to a big time program because his you know his clock's ticking. And if he don't go to the Super Bowl this year, I'll predict he goes back to college. Yeah. It might be one of those saying, "Well, I have Russell Wilson, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I mean, as long as he's there, I might still be here." And this you know. might be it for him, you know. Yeah. And, and as soon as Russell's done, 
He could be like Coach Bill Snyder from Kansas State. He could coach to he's 78, 77. He's just in shape, like yeah. you said. He's, he, he looks, like he's in his, looks like he's in his 60s. Like you told 50s. me, it, like, and, and they compare, like, who's the older head coach, uh, always coaching in the NFL? But a lot of people would say Bill Belichick, but it's actually Pete Carroll. And, yeah. like, he do, it doesn't look like it. No, he's – he must run a lot. The guy looks the same. Yeah. And he looks the exact same like he did, like, like 10 years ago, really. What he did at USC was amazing because USC couldn't get it – they couldn't get it going for years. You know, when John Robinson, who's now at LSU, it's yeah, incredible. Yep. John Robinson was really the last – elite coach that you know after McKay yeah right but they were so spalled under McKay and Robinson and then there was like seven coaches yeah it took it was a long I mean they had a guy named Ted Tallner that nobody even knows (laughs) about and he couldn't make it but they had they just couldn't get it going Mm -hmm. and they brought Pete Carroll in and he was fired from the Patriots remember yeah yeah, because that was his first first stint in the NFL and he had a quarterback named Steve Grogan and and blah 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 anyway he he just they hit him at the right time. He was forty ish, mm-hmm. and he was ready to go. And and he went to Colorado and got Lindell White. You know, he signed Reggie Bush. Now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, right. Signed, he signed you know Leinart. He signed all these phenomenal players. Oh, USC had the pick of the litter then. They were but he, rolling, but he knew who to sign, mm-hmm. and he knew how to coach him. He knew how to run it. And if he stays at USC, Jace, and there's no clouds of investigation. I think USC is right up there with Saban. I think he's got four or five national championships. Yeah, because he had – let's see. He had the back-to-back. I think that Texas game, too, was, was big as Vince well. Young, they, they would have had – I think they would have had three straight yeah. if that wasn't for Vince Young. So, we would be talking about USC as like the Alabama if it wasn't yeah. for that loss. Yeah, it, it, you know, things are just – they say success and failure is so fine line, yep. you know, and – but he's made a ton of money in Seattle, and he's had a great career. He's been to a couple of Super Bowls. Yeah, he's he's uh he's won the Super Bowl. Yep. Look, if they would have ran the ball with Marshawn Lynch, <laughs> right, we would have right. won another one. Right. So, um, you know, it's interesting. It's gonna and then look. Final thing to say about the pros, the Jamar Chase catch reminded me of about five of them identical at LSU. Like the, yep. I'm talking about the yardage, the way mm-hmm. he caught it, and the way it was thrown. It's like a replay of an Ole Miss game, the way they caught he caught one against Ole Miss uh, at home against Florida. It's the same play. It's yes, the same. Clemson, the, the first touchdown, the deep shot on the right sideline against Clemson. They got them on the board you first. You know, that's a hard throw yep. and a hard catch. Yep. And they're so in sync. And people go, oh, they didn't draft him because he played with him. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, right. Because they're very used to one. They, they're on the same page. They got that chemistry already yeah. before I mean, he that, even starts. That's a hard throw and a hard catch. And they made it look so easy. And those Cincinnati fans went crazy. And I love what Joe did at, at the post game. He came yeah, in there and that. said, like, so, uh, yeah, Jamar can't catch, right? <laughs> right. He's got hand problems. <laughs> He's got so. hand problems, right? So Yeah, but it's a, it's a uh, – Frisbee's trying to catch there. Mm-hmm. But, no, it's – he's going to be great. Jamar Chase, look at the receivers LSU has in the NFL right now. Jarvis oh, Landry, boy. Beckham, Marshall. Beckham. Yep. You know, you got – you got him. You DJ got Char. Justin, DJ Char. Justin Jefferson. Yep. Justin Jefferson. I mean, they've got Alabama, LSU. Don't they just own the receivers in the NFL? Mm-hmm. Just yep. Alabama, LSU. It's like 96 percent of them. It seems like were those two programs alone. My final thoughts for the show, Jace. Um, LSU needs to go and put Jack Besh and Brian Thomas on the field early, mm-hmm. and develop that chemistry with Max. Wit Boutte. I still, I still like Trey Palmer out there. I think mean, Palmer's made some plays at, at receiver, and I feel like he in the slot and see what I mean. Uh, he he's made some plays. I mean, he ha- hasn't been dominant or stood out or anything. No, not yet. But he's he's made enough plays for me to the fourth keep him guy. Out there. Yeah, right. But when you go to a three receiver set, hands of glue, Jack Besh, Butte, and get Brian Thomas going because he's got something not a lot of them have. He's six five and he can get up. He'll fight. He had a couple of drop balls yeah, late in the yeah. game with Nuss. I thought that hurt him a little bit. Now, what are your thoughts on Nuss coming in and playing? He needs playing time. Mm-hmm. I wish he would have went in the second quarter, but they weren't ahead enough. I think what was lost in this game, they didn't run Kiner enough, Goodwin because of the injury enough. They didn't get that accomplished. You got to get that done in the next game, and then you got to get Nussmeyer in the game more because he's got to be ready from here on out because – He's too too talented to not change it up. So if mm. Max is not effective somehow, 
then you can change it up. The guy, I mean, I'm even thinking they're not telling him not to run because Nuss didn't run. Yeah. He could have ran for yeah. 80 yards three, three of those plays Saturday night, but yep. he would not run. I think they're saying don't run. Mm -hmm. Well, right. sometimes you just got to say, you know what? Let's just go. Let's play. Because Mullen doesn't do that with his quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. It's like yep. Emory Jones, tell him not to run. No, run. Mm -hmm. and yeah, don't hold him back. You know, same the with Max. The, yeah, same with the new quarterback at Florida. But I think Nuss, Jace, when LSU's having such trouble running the ball, they need to have plays for him just to run. He can run for first. He can get you the three yards like Burrow did. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they're not doing that, not right. working on it now. Like Now it shows a little bit of maturity of him. Usually quarterbacks just duck their head and run. He's, he's looking down the field and then, okay, I'm going to run him. Nothing's downfield but I'm talking about when Max is the starter like in the first quarter and it's third and three and you can't run put him in just to run just let him go outside and get it because he's super fast mm -hmm. and he's smart about running but I think against Central Michigan he needs to play a half I don't know if he can though I don't know I mean and they might it, have to it fight also depends I don't know how well she does in the first half a lot's lost on what needed to be done they're not finished on what they – they should have got everything done against McNeese. My feelings is they didn't. Now, in my opinion, do you, th do you think LSU has improved? I think they have. Have some, they improved substantially? Some, some. No. But I think they've improved just a little bit. I think the defense is getting better. To an elite status, I don't know, mm -hmm. until we play an elite team. But the offense is so bad running the ball that the coordinator – has got – Pete's has got to really, like, all right, what do we move forward with? What is too difficult for Max? What is – yeah. what's going to be our bread and butter? What doesn't work? And and I really believe they got to put Ty on the bench right now for the next game and say, okay, Kiner, show me what you got. Goodwin, show me what you got. And if Bradford's eligible, show me what you got. Another thing as well, uh, the Joe Bray offense. Everybody's like, we need to get back to the Joe Bray offense, the Joe Bray offense. Sometimes it's best – that we run the offense that's best for your personnel. And sometimes yeah. it goes down to that. It doesn't have to be, let's go back to Joe Brady offense. And they can't Sometimes be, it's be best, run the best offense for the guys you have on your team. They can't be 219 because no. Clyde Edwards was a four-year guy, redshirt junior. Justin Jefferson was a redshirt yep, sophomore. Three or four proven receivers. Jamar already. Chase, all those guys were experienced. They were in sync before the season started. These guys aren't in sync. No. And your receivers, the good ones, haven't played a lot. And the coaches did not handle that right. If I'm LSU coaches, I'm playing them against UCLA. I've already got my guys kind of picked who's going to play more mm -hmm. reps. Jack Besh is playing more for me, UCLA. Yeah, to me, he's stood out as your number two guy, to me, behind Butte, because he's been consistent every time they go into him. And Thomas him, hadn't played enough to be able to show right. what he can do. And, and Thomas has the upside. So, I, you know, and then, like I said, maybe keep Palmer in at the fourth. You got to get J. Ray Jenkins out of there. He's dropping too many balls. Mm -hmm. Deion Smith is the sleeper of the group from Mississippi. Yep. He, he didn't play against UCLA. Right. He is 6'3", 210, can run. He's a, he's a different guy. And what's the status on Malik Neighbors? I would move him to safety like I put in the preview magazine. He's tough. There's no room. Maybe mo room next year, move him back. But LSU needs a hard-hitting safety even if Derek Davis gets better, Sage Ryan hadn't played yet the show. Um, Jay Ward is hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and our and young guy, you know, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one guy that looked better. I think Major Burns settled in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not saying he's going to set the world on right. fire against Mississippi State, but Major Burns started making plays. In the first game, he just was lost. Mm -hmm. I think he was timid. Right. So and I thought Baskerville did did pretty good. He did good. I think Damone Clark is getting too much negative publicity. Mm -hmm. Damone is actually making plays. Mm -hmm. uh, he just needs help. The third spot needs help. Right. Um, Joseph Evans is getting better. He's still not there. But I'm gonna tell you, yeah. like I said, Roy, Jacoby and Guillory, uh, Mason Smith, Mason Smith, yeah, Andre Anthony, B.J. B.J. Ojolari. Those yep. guys are freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. And then they still hadn't played Savion Jones, who's yeah. a freak. Yeah. I did see Landon Jackson go in on punt team. Okay. okay. He is playing. They can get him worked in somehow. 
Uh, and then, like I said, Little. Little's a, uh, yeah. a guy that's earned himself some playing time because he can rush, man. He's that quick. was that was the thing taken away from that LSU game. I came really excited about was that we were talking about the depth of the defensive line, but we for the first time we got to see that yeah. really in that. And Neil season. Farrell brings his lunchbox. Mm-hmm. Neil Farrell's not going to give you a you know a Roy game or a right, a, but he he's not going to dominate a game. He's but a he's guy that solid. You, you need Neil Farrell on this team. Mm-hmm. You need more of them. And hopefully, get Glenn Logan Glenn back. Glenn Logan's a carbon copy of him. Yep, you know right. he's going to give you everything he's got. He's going to plug the middle. Um, but you know, Jace, it's just again we don't LSU. I don't. You know, the run game should have been great Saturday night against McNeese. Which that was a major disappointment. That was obviously the major b- biggest disappointment. And from I, that again, game. I don't think this is just an O-line problem. Uh, I think they need it's a run. I think it's a run scheme problem. It's a it's, scheme. Yeah. It's, it's technique. Um, it's also some of these young O-linemen have never played. Um, and that's that's – that's not that's the fault of the coaches. They got to play them the year before. A lot of these guys like Dummerville hadn't played much. Martinez didn't play much. Um, Dillinger hadn't played much. So they they got a chance to get better, and we'll see what happens with that. And I do think uh, that Chase and Hines has to step it up when he comes back. Bradford has to step it up. And there's another way you can look at it too. I mean, you, you did but you did loot, miss three starters in the offensive line for that Saturday. That was yeah. some kind of, like, horizon. And, and to tell you how good LSU is defensive line-wise, Ollie Gay didn't play. I mean, here's a guy. Now, Ollie Gay needs to work on his run game. Mm-hmm. Right. As a pass rusher, he's a freak. But his run game, he needs to cut that edge off because he tends to go to sleep yeah, a lot. He tends to go up upfield a lot. On and, the edge. Yep. And, and, and he's got he's to gotta learn how to play the run. Mm-hmm. And, and he shows some plays like the old. He won the game. He won the old Miss game by causing the fumble on the run play. So. Yeah, but if you watched him against Vandy last year in Missouri and those games in state, he just was mm-hmm. just lost against the run. And but yep. he's a freak that really hadn't played a lot prior to last year. Yeah, he you was know, very so. raw, he was very raw last year when he came yeah. in and but, played. But I think the D line is so good. It would be a shame if this team went under ten and two. It would be just be like wow. You got this D line that you, you got win the championships D-line. with. You know you got all these skill guys, skill guys go war. You don't even have you Dwight. Mo- you, you still don't have Dwight McCullough in at the no. corner. He's not playing yet because of an injury. I don't know. You what have it all is. the receivers. You have all the corners. You have the defensive line. You have a promising court like quarterback room, and it, it's it's very frustrating to see that un- underachieve. They haven't put it together, and it's nope. it's it's not the kids. No, it's not. It's coaching. And they got to get this right. And you know what? Um, I'm not going to be like a lot of people in town. I'm not going to be like, oh, the world's blowing up. They're going to lose every game. Let's see what they do after Central Michigan. Right. This is the final practice game. Hopefully it's a win. And they say the biggest improvement you make is from game two to game three. three. Yeah, that's it. Yep. And they just were not as far along as the fans would have liked them. And – you know, when LSU fans and the coaches need to see a functioning running game against Central Michigan. Let's just use the word functioning. I would take a 130-yard run game against this team among four backs. Just see some. Just see. Just you don't, we don't, I'm not talking about 300 yards. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about 250. Average four or five yards a carry. Let's just see some runs on third and three, third and two, that actually mm-hmm. a functioning run right. team. Average four or five yards of carry instead of two or three. Find I mean, find your own yeah. line and don't get caught up into making somebody angry because you bench them. You better play who can help you to win and, and move forward. You better find your own line. You better find your receivers and your running backs. And you got one game left to do it because Starksville. That's when L- the gauntlet starts. Our LSU fans could sit here and say, oh, we're this than that. You know what? They're five and five and they're one and one this year. Let's come to earth on where LSU is right now and mm-hmm. get back to quit saying, oh, we're going to be state. You know, state. You you have to take it. When, in the yeah. SEC, you have to take it one game at a time. You can't look three, four games down the road. State just, just take beat, it one game at a time. State just beat a top 25 program in North Carolina State. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'd probably put North Carolina State in really 22 and 25. Louisiana Tech's a top, I mean, top, they're really top, 30. They're 30, top 35 35, team. yeah. So, state is going to be – you know, they got the D-line all the time. They still got a great O-D-line. They're always got big guys. And their quarterback, 
is really good. Will Rogers is really good. And their receivers are really good. Peyton, uh, that, that left mm-hmm. to go to Tennessee, yep. you, you don't even notice he left. This young Peyton kid who went to right. the volunteers. I mean, Tennessee's got – he's their best receiver from state. And state's got about 12 other receivers that are phenomenal. We'll see, Jace. But, you know, it would be good to see LSU do well. I'm hoping they do well. Um, I'm still keeping an optimistic uh, approach to see after one more game if they can achieve the, the, the run yeah. game. This this Central Michigan game is going to be it's going to be big for them to see what ty- what type of team they they will be. But the LSU SEC fans are, are very smart people, they're very knowledgeable people, and they know if you can't run against uh, McNeese and Central mm-hmm. Michigan, then you're not going to be able to run the whole year, no. and then that means that our quarterbacks are going to be um, running for their lives and not going to be able to showcase what they can really do. And yep. that means that would just be, to me, that would be a tragedy for the program and the fan base. And obviously that would be um, not a good thing. So let's see what happens against Central Michigan and if, see if we can run the ball against them. And the defense is going to keep you in a lot of games. If, you know, even if LSU yep. was to go 6-6 six and six or 7-5, and five, um, the defense is going to, they're good enough to keep you in every game. You know, and all you got to do is run. You just got to be able to run the ball. Yep. And then find your receivers. If you look at it, you you've solved one part of your dilemma from last week. Like our defense has improved, our defense has made some strides. Now our running game still not there. Let's focus a hundred percent on that, and then let's we'll see where we're at. And hopefully they get Sage Ryan back, who's I think a phenomenal safety that the fans haven't seen yet. Yep. He could be a he could be a plug in right away and be an all conference safety, either strong or free safety. Major Burns keeps getting better, and then you got Sage maybe, and you got Derek Davis getting mm-hmm. better. Yep. Let's just see what happens there. But the, uh, the the other concern I have before we end the show, is LSU's got too many players out. Yep. They you know twenty two players out against McNeese. You had about fifteen out against uh, UCLA. These are two deep guys. That's a program concern. I yeah. Mean, you need all your players. I mean, injuries going to happen with lose three or four guys, but if you if you have twenty two players out, that's that's a program issue. Yeah, I'm not talking about Glenn Logan being hurt. I'm talking about yeah, I'm like talking about people being out ac- for like academics or, or whatever, personal or I mean, whatever. We knew Jay Ward was sitting and Allie Gay with injuries just mm-hmm. to make sure. Yep. And Logan, but I'm talking about other players. Right. Yep. Other be twenty five players, and so that that needs to be that is a big concern of mine for the fans, is that your recruiting doesn't mean anything if, if you don't have all these guys playing. And Five not. stars don't mean a thing if they're not out there actually on the field. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> why did you even sign a class right. if only uh, five of them can play right now? I mean, what, mm-hmm. what what's going on? You know, so right. that's been the biggest disappointment to me for this coaching staff is you start a season and you don't have your team ready to play. That's the biggest disappointment. Um, the kids are good kids, and then we'll again the young coordinators. We'll see what happens after Central Michigan. Let's do another report card. Jury, jury is still out on. Them. I give them a C plus against McNeese. It's a, it's a C for me. Too. Um, I hope it gets to a, an A with the Central Michigan game. I hope we all walk away going, you know what, the defense is phenomenal. Good. We get another eight sacks. Uh, we get running the ball. Get a run game of 130, 140 yards. Max showing accuracy. You give him a run game, he's going to be better. Yep. So, and then you you got to find your receivers. You can't play uh, ten receivers. You got to get that that chemistry among Max and three or four guys. You got to shorten it down. And you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know what you tell the other receivers? Say, look, I can move you back to receiver next year, but we might need some help at DB. Won't you be a team player and go out there and be a DB? We need a guy that can knock somebody backwards. That's what LSU needs mentality wise right now. Because that's what they're doing at Alabama and Notre Dame and Oklahoma. They're not sitting great players. Mm-mm. Find a spot for them where you don't have depth. And if you sh- if you have a game day with 25 guys out and you got Deion Smith on the sideline, get him, cross-train him in practice to play safety. Perfect example is Devin White. He, he came here. He wanted to play running, running back. back yeah. And at the time, LSU didn't really have any scholarship linebackers. They're really thin yeah. there. And look what Devin White became. 
I did see Philip Webb play too from Georgia. Yeah, he was in the game. Yeah, I did see Philip Webb out I there. Did, Josh White didn't play again. Yeah, Anton. I Sampe. think he w- he might have been out. He, he might was be, out. Yeah, he was Josh out. Josh White was out again. Yeah. Too many guys out that mm-hmm. needed missed opportunity. Yep, missed opportunity. We'll see what happens. Any final thoughts, Jace? No, it was just another good week of college football. A lot of teams proved a lot out there. It's good to see the NFL back uh, their first game of the season and. Also, it was just our thought. I know this past weekend was also 9-11, the 20-year anniversary. Yeah. So, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that had family members that, you know, unfortunately were part of that tragic day. But, uh, yeah, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody, and we're, we're thinking about you over that past weekend. Not just the 9-11, but our thoughts and prayers to every family that's been affected by losing a family member to COVID mm-hmm. um, or yep. cancer or anything. You yeah, know, it's been a rough. Um, it's been a rough year, a very stressful couple of years, but – Prayers to everybody, even with these hurricanes, with Ida. You know, yep. prayers to everybody with that, and just, you know, you're you're like me, Jason. You know, we worry about other people, and um, you know, we're family owned, our company, and and you know, we we just wish the best for the state. We got strong people in Louisiana. Yep. Uh, very resilient people, and it was great also to see uh, with a hurricane with a lot of late Charles. Like we helped. Like Lafayette, New Orleans were helping Lake Charles out in their time of need, and we seeing Lake Charles come back and and offering support and supplies uh, to the friends down in South Louisiana. That was good to see as well. Yeah, and look, I I want everybody to get their power back too, because I know I'm I'm fortunate. Even after seven nights of sweating, there's people that are still still sweating don't have power with two weeks going by with no power and prayers to them and. Uh, hope they all get their power back soon. Uh, but look, uh, final thoughts is if you want to get our preview magazine, North or South issue, go to LAFootballMagazine.com to order. That's LAFootballMagazine.com. We will see everybody on Wednesday. Wednesday show, I've got an interview with Denny Duran from Evangel Christian High School and also Marty Kent, former Louisiana Tech kicker and new defense coordinator for Evangel Christian, uh, Ronnie Alexander, who they call Spot. That's his nickname. Yeah, he was part of the huge part of their heyday when uh, yeah. Evangel Christian was really rolling. Ronnie's one of the, the best D coordinators in high school football in the country. You know, he coached the late Cole Pittman yeah. and, and many, many great players that went on that, to college. He had 32, I think, D1 players, Jace, on yeah. defense. Everybody was talking about how great they were on offense, but they Just had some good players on defense In back the 90s then and early 2000s, yep. uh, Spot was known as, and he still is, he's now new with Evangel. He came back to Evangel mm-hmm. after being at, um, uh, at Red, River, Red River for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then he was at Calvary Baptist, yep. but he's went back to where he started. And I think you're going to enjoy the interview with Marty Kent, who, former tech kicker, whose son's on the team, who's a freshman kicker. Who's five foot four, five five, one fifteen? Had three field goals in his first game, uh, and did pretty good against Dutchtown. But we'll talk about that game. I also went to East Ascension game um, against Scotlandville. Jace, you covered East Feliciana Episcopal. Yep. And we'll talk about all the high school games this coming Friday and Thursday and Saturday. And I know Zachary and Saint Aug will meet up on Saturday. That's gonna be a good one. And Santa Mall's playing their second Saturday game in a row against Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just weird. I know that I'm glad they're getting their games in, though. Oh, there's oh. going to be some uh, great matchups, I believe. And the card, John Curtis, oh, Catholic man. High, West Monroe. Tons of Zachary, great games. St. All. Cool. It's going to be a lot of great Man- games. Mandeville and uh, Walker. Yep. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all that on Wednesday, but I hope everybody has a great Monday. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.